Dave here, how are you? Today is the 30th of January, February, March, April, May. Only a day or so away and we're in winter. And it's been cold. Not cold by you know global standards, but it's cold by Australian standards. Uh, I hope you've had a good week and uh, you're ready to have a little bit of fun. Have a look at the photos I took of the lunar eclipse and also Whoop, I need to fix this other thing over the side here, David. Of course I do. There we go. We have the chat. Ha! I nearly stuffed up. There it is. Um, all right. So we, we, what have we got here? AV is good. Uh, I have Colin in one window, <coughs> Dave in the other. It's a good, nice way to be. Um, Bob Lewin, greetings. And hello to everyone else that said good day. Now today on the show, Going to be, as I said, going to have a look at those photos. I've done the social thing as far as uh, letting everyone on Instagram know, and you'll probably get another email or another notification from Facebook saying that we're live as well. Um, yeah, so we're going to do another French cleat like we did over there, but a little bit different this time. I'm going to utilize the cleat that's already on the wall. Remember, I just put one and it's going to extend out for Ron. Well, today is Ron. Uh, this one is going to be for my tripods. Now, these things take up a fair bit of space. If they're standing up, opened up, and all that kind of stuff, they take a truckload of space. It's not streaming yet. I think it is. Should be. Uh, let me have a look down there. Everything's looking good. Well, Peter, I don't know what the story is. Is everyone, anyone else having an issue watching what's happening or not? Should be okay. Um, now, just leave a comment in that box down there. We'll see what's happening. So these, I have about four of these, and maybe I'll get another one. There you go. Thank you. All good. All right. <laughs> get that out of the way. Um, so I'm going to make a rack for these. Now, if I end up not wanting to put them there, I want to put something somewhere else because like you, I tend to have this as a floating situation. One day I'll like to have tripods over there. I might want to put them in a drawer over the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it in such a way that I can utilize it as also a clamp rack hanging sideways. Now this is the smallest clamp that I probably want to put on it. And so I need to make something that's going to work, that'll work with everything. So let me just do a quick drawing. Morning, Terence. We'll jump to Carl Cam. And I'll use a Sharpie pen. So I want something to be just roughly a square. And on the side, elevation. I'm going to make it so there's the front. Uh, we'll have a French cleat that comes down to about there. And this is the cleat that's already on the wall. And then I'm going to put just a little fellow at the bottom here to stop the bottom swinging in. Now the top cleat is going to be a fair size. I want it to come up almost to the top. The reason being, if I do hang clamps off this, and the clamps will be hanging this way on that peg. I want it to be re relatively stiff so I don't get the top rolling over at all. Uh, now, I'm going to use domino material that I made uh, for the Lutian's bench. So I made 14 millimeter domino up and I had some stuff left over. I'll show you what it is. So instead of using dowels, I'm going to use this stuff. Now, you could also, watching live for a change, are you, Russell? I was going to come back to the other uh, camera here. You could use dowel. That's, that's fine. I don't have any dowel lying around at the moment, but I had this. This is hardwood. This is New Guinea teak. And I thought it was just sitting in the box there. I'll use it. And I'm going to show you a little trick on how to use the domino to also do this without using a wedge. I've never done it, but we'll see. <laughs> See how it goes. I've always used a wedge, so this might be a bit scary. It might end up with egg on the face. So we need the sizes, and I've gone over there and done a quick measurement. I think I want 
the unit to be 700 high. So we'll go back to Carl Cam because it's a little bit easier. So 700 from there to there. And the width, um, let me see. Let's go 8, 840, which was what I was kind of after when I did a quick measurement over there earlier. And I don't know how long these are going to be. Well, I do know because that's them right there. I'll cut them all to the same kind of length. We we'll, won't do all of them, but we'll just do a few of them today. And uh, I'm going to put four in a row so that the, pretend this is the uh, tripod, it can sit on there and pretend this length is a clamp and that's another clamp. So I have to make so that it'll work nicely. All right, that's going to be pretty basic. Next thing to do is to change cameras. Happy Sunday and all from Tippo. Excellent. We'll go to camera three. I've got it set up over here. So this is the piece of plywood that I'm using. This is, remember I said the other week, this is a sheet of marine ply that I had got for some of my benches, but this one got a cup in it. So the cup is this direction. So it's not really, it's not going to be any good for what I bought it for. And it's got a couple of scratches on it because I kind of disregarded it. So I'm going to do some stuff with it in here. And I thought this is an ideal thing. The cleat is going to go, oh, sorry, there's the cleat. The unit that I'm going to put on it is going to go between here. I'm restricted by the power point here and the fan over here. And I'm just going to show you the easy way to do it. So I'm going to come over here and get a pencil and a tape. I'm going to measure from here to the top of the cleat on the wall. And that is 360 millimeters. Now 360 from there down to the top is the same as 360 to the bottom to here. You get it? So this is my clearance in case I want to lift this up off the cleat and take it off. I can do that because I'm going to be measuring from the point. I don't know if you can see that there, but this, the 45 on the sheet is going back this direction. So I'm going to measure 360 from here back and that'll be the height of the cleat. It'll work. But before I do that, I'm going to dock this panel down to the width that I want. I think I said I want 840 wide. I'm going to do this without using these. I'll just write on that wall 360. From there to there. And that'll remind me when I get to that stage. All right. So what I'll use is that fellow and the right hand parallel guide. Now, I could use the tape and kind of line things up. I just find this is quicker. Some people say, oh, well, this is slow, but it's not. And also, if you're doing repetitive work, this thing's just brilliant. Lock that on there. Put that there like that. Get a couple of the little knobs. And now I'm set up for measuring. And also the good thing about this, it reduces any tipping that you might get from the parallel guide. Not that, sorry, from the um, GRS 16 PE. Not that it's going to happen, but you know. So now I'm going to just measure that. And what did I want? 840. So I'll slide this along to 840, which is 840 right there. Drop that over. Give it a little bit of tippy tippy and it's done. Now that is going to be 840 wide and I'll show you more as I'm going along. Get the saw out. Now this is the super duper easy way and these are expensive items. So, you know, it is what it is. 
I did make comment below in the description box below the video. You can do this with a straight piece of timber and a circular saw. It'll do the same thing, maybe not as neat, but you'll get a pretty good result uh, if you haven't got this gear. You don't need this gear if you're going to be doing it once or twice. I got this stuff because it makes life easy for me and I do a fair bit of work. All right, I'm going to set the depth to, yeah, let's go 20 millimeters. I'm going to make sure that I've got this tuned to that. I'll turn this on. Wait for that little blue light to start spinning. Turn the saw on. Beautiful. Okay, so what I did then was just Bluetooth the units together. Lock that on there. And have a quick read. I had to get out and complete blah, 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 blah. 3 a.m. here. Not often. Julian. Well, thank you very much for dropping in at 3 o'clock in the morning. Thanks, buddy. All right. Throw the eyes on. And we'll just do this cut. I'm going to move around a little bit because this is a long cut to get to the other side of the sheet. Now you might, you might be looking and say, well, there was a bit of dust coming up there, Dave. There was. You know why? I forgot to do something. See this guy here? This is up high. I should have pushed it down like so to be the right height when I put it on the track again to be the splinter guard. And also, it's the front part of the dust extraction. If that's not down, dust is going to go everywhere. You might have seen when I've used the table saw that if I'm just taking the edge off something on the table saw, dust goes everywhere. No matter how good your dust extraction is, stuff's going to go flying out the side. All right, so we'll have a look at that. Move that there. There's my board. Look at that. I don't know if you can see how clean that cut is on that side, but it's pretty good. All right. Pop this down for a minute. And I'm going to get rid of this one out of the way. I've got that there just in case I stuff up <laughs> on this one if I make a mistake. All right, my first cut is going to be, sorry, that was my first cut, but my next cut is going to be, what was it, 360? So I'm gonna come 360 this way, and I wanna make sure I've got enough left there. If I don't have enough left, well then I might have to just change my plan a little bit. 360 is there. And then we've got how much left? 750. And how tall is it? It is 700. All good. All good. So it'll be fine. All right. Parallel guide. Sorry, not parallel guide. I keep on saying parallel guide. This guy. <laughs> uh, bring this back to 360. 360 millimeters. Done. Easy or not. There we go. Ears again. Here we go. Beautiful. Now this is, I didn't go through. I didn't go through all the way. 
we'll do another one just to make sure I wasn't pushing it down hard enough. I'm through at the back, but not at the front. All right. Pull that back just a little. That's a bit embarrassing. I wonder why that happened. It's just right at the front. I know why. I need to bring this back just a touch. There. The saw, what happened there, was the saw wasn't back far enough. It was hitting this, uh, this guide. And so, because the blade is a circle, it just didn't get the full plunge. I'll do the right thing. There you go. All right. Now that's my piece that I'll be using in a minute. Let me have a look. That's very good to hear about, um, about John getting back on, on board with, the, uh, with his gear. He is feeling better, but it takes time, you know. He's had a lot done to his body and it's, 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 it's not easy, you know. It's, it's, well, it's easy for us to make comments, like, oh, what's going on? But we're not the ones going through it all. All right, what I'm gonna do is pop this up here and see if it actually goes on. It does, it does, it does. There we go. Okay, show's finished. Here I go. No, it's great. That's pretty cool. Now what I want to do next is cut this piece down to, what did I say? 700 deep. And it's going to go that way. So I'm going to rip it this direction. That's the crappy edge from before. These are my nice, I'll bring them over so you can have a look. Nice clean edges here, there, and there. And this one is rubbish. So I'm gonna cut that, that one off. And all, all, all happening using the, um, the JRS-16. 700. is down here. Good. And I've got that little bit there. <laughs> I was just looking down here and that line that I put there at 700, it's spot on it. I love it. Okay. And we've got the right width. I'm pretty sure. Well, it's the same width as that. Here we go. There's my bottom piece. And then I'll move this right out of the way. Hold on, it's just so easy. So this piece is going to go on there. Now this is one of the tricky parts. What I'm gonna do is take this off here for the moment. Is put glue on there. So we'll go to the other camera. 20 past. Um, let me see. Here we go back here again. Yeah, great to hear that John's uh, getting back into it. Now, how about we have a look at a couple of photos while we're waiting about this? Where are we? Now, I took some photos 
And I took one with my phone. Let me see if I've got it here, here, here. I may not have put it in here. Moon rising, da da da, wise. All right, this is what, what I was looking at from where I live. Now you see the moon and a bit of cloud on the left hand side, and also this constellation that you can see there is Scorpio. So just above the moon is a bright star, off to the right there are a couple more, and then the right hand and down a little bit is the beginning of the body of Scorpio, and you can see. It kind of tracks down a little bit and around to the right, then turns around, curls back under towards the left. That's his tail. So that's, that was interesting to see that. Uh, now this photo I took with the mobile phone, with the camera in the phone, which for a phone is a bloody decent photo. I, could, I was pretty impressed. Now the other thing I got, the, uh, I got the, one of my video cameras out. And I thought, you know what, let's have a look at how quickly the, the moon travels through the sky. And you can see the eclipse has already started, not the total eclipse part, but the, but the other part. And obviously that's the Earth's shadow on the right hand side. But see the moon traveling up through the screen. <clears throat> that's pretty, pretty fast. So you have to set your camera gear up at a pretty fast speed to be able to get a decent shot that's not too blurry. If you see the eclipse slowly coming across the bottom there as well. So I think you've probably had enough of looking at that. Uh, this is what I shot the photos with, the actual photos I'm about to show you, uh, which is left over from my day. I've had this good camera gear for about 18 years. About 18 years ago I got into sports photography and it paid for itself. Uh, was overcast for you, okay, really. that's no good. So the, these are things that I've had, oh, it's been about 10 years since I got these things out of the cupboard. And I, that's one of the next shows that we're going to do is I've decided to get all the gear out and make a really nice dovetail display case for it that's going to go on the wall. So it's going to be going to encourage me to use it more often. Now here's a hundred percent crop of the actual surface of the moon that I took with that photo. So you can see the kind of clarity that I get with it and then this is kind of the image before the eclipse started. Now, I don't know if in the northern hemisphere you see the same as we do. Possibly, possibly. Ah, oh, Tippo, that's, um, it's a 500 millimeter F4 Nikon lens. It's a, a prime. And I also had a two times teleconverter on it. So it was basically at a meter and I was shooting at a DX crop, which means it was half the image was showing up. So it's in effect, I was shooting at 1500 millimeters. The camera itself is a Nikon D810. Now, early in the night, we saw that was, you know, this is what we saw. Now, because I'm shooting through the horizon and where I am up in the Blue Mountains, I'm looking out over the top of Sydney. So there's a whole lot of the Western suburbs and Sydney. It's all got a lot of light coming up and a lot of pollution, like a, a lot of light pollution in the air, which makes it very hard to get a sharp image because it's like looking at something through the a heat haze. So you'll notice that the horizon, or sorry, the atmosphere has actually created the moon to look like it was um, kind of elliptical in shape. See how it looks wider than it is tall? It's, and it's pretty much a round sphere. As I say, you have a look at that and then have a look at this one when it's further up away from the effect of the horizon. Uh, so what we might do now is come back to the project and keep going. Some of the things to be aware of with, with photos and taking photos of the moon and eclipses, there's three things that you need to control when you're taking a photo. Speed, aperture, and ISO. Now, 
The speed is what you want to do to, uh, to try and freeze it. So if, you, if it's moving, you want to be able to freeze it so it doesn't look like it's moving. When I used to shoot people playing cricket, bowlers, bowling a ball straight at me, I could freeze it so you could see the stitches. So I'd have to shoot around about one two thousandth of a second to do that. Now, you, to lock that speed in, you also have to have your aperture, which is what's going to let enough light onto your film or your sensor to be able to give you a correct exposure. Now, correct exposure is basically, if I'm looking at this cup, for instance, the photo I take of it is going to look exactly the same as if I'm looking at it. That's, that's the ideal thing. Now, we can trick it around a little bit. We can make it look brighter or we can make it look darker. But that's, that's, you play around with these three things to achieve that. But speed is the most important thing for something that's moving at speed fast. The aperture I've already explained. Now, aperture can also give you what's called a depth of field, a very shallow depth of field. Like, you know, if I took a photo of that cup, for instance, in here, and I wanted all the background behind it to be blurred, I would shoot at a very large aperture which means the iris inside the lens is open right up as wide as it'll go to let maximum amount of light in. And that changes how it sees the image. It will only focus on a very shallow area. So I can take a photo of someone and focus on their eye and the front of their nose is just starting to go out of focus and the back behind them. And so everything looks nice and creamy behind them. So there's little tricks. And then the last thing, of course, is the, um, the sensitivity of the film or the sensor, the image sensor, that you're letting the light touch. So back in the day, if you went to a, um, let's say, a, a chemist or a supermarket and we bought film, a lot of us had these little Instamatic cameras, the little Kodak Instamatics, you remember them? Uh, and, and a little box, little brownie box camera. Those things were, were good fun. And you know, I grew up with those things. So your, the film normally would be something like around 100 ASA. So that was saying how good it was, how, how, how it reacted to light. And 100 ASA is really nice for taking photos of people. It's not grainy or noisy. Uh, then you start stepping up the speed to 200 ASA. And that's not bad. It's a little bit grainy back in the day, depending on the lenses and everything the, the light's going through. But it could freeze action. And really, really fast film was 400 ASA. ASA. Wow, yeah, you, that was fantastic. You can do anything with that. Well, a lot of these photos I took at 3,600 ISO, which is the same as ASA, basically. The, uh, the total eclipse, which I will show you towards the end of the show, uh, and some other things that I did with it, was, you know, I may, may have taken up to 8,000 uh, ISO. And I think maybe one thirteenth of a second instead of two thousandths of a second. And aperture wide open at f4. These big long lenses are designed for sports. So normally their best aperture is f4 to f5. So it's, uh, I, it'll go out to f11 and what have you. But the image quality is not as good because these things are designed to be sharp on one particular spot. All right. Glue is the next thing. I hope I haven't bored you too much with that little uh, photography lesson. But I, I used to have a passion for it. And I think I should get it back because it's fun. And, you know, it's, it's a way of remembering stuff that you do. Like I have a look back through some of the sports photos that I took. And, I, and it brings back other memories for me. And I, it's very enjoyable. Now I'm going to glue all of this. Do they? Pentax have a star tracker. Russell got rid of all of my photo gear, form and all of my dozen lenses plus the studio setup. Why? Why? You know, I, I didn't want to do that. Like this gear is worth a bomb and I could probably get very good money for it. But no, I, I might pick it up. I might want to go with it again. So that's why I'm going to make this, uh, this display cabinet for it. It's going to be dovetailed. And it's, I'm going to use all Cole's gear, you know, the Gifkin's jig. Anyway, here we go. I'm going to put some glue on here. It doesn't have to be a lot. I've got to make sure that it's facing the right way. That's why I put it up on the wall. Remember the other week I said, sometimes I don't get the heights quite right and I'll stuff it up. So here we go. It's not a lot. If 
it really didn't need to have a truckload of glue on it. See that? That's all I've done. I'm going to put this over there, so I'll switch cameras. Remember, finally, 400 ASA, the difference was amazing. No one was ever interested in buying my gear. It wasn't digital. But the lenses, all my lenses are F-mount, Nikon. And so they work with the film cameras and also with the digital cameras. I love them. Anyway, uh, let's go to the other camera. I might come in a little bit closer with that now. Take that out of there. And bring the camera over there. And tip it up a little. How's that, guys? Is that all right? All right. Here we go. Pop this one in here. Like so, and that's all good. Now, one of the reasons, whoa, we've got some glue running. I'll get my little brush here. I didn't think that one through, did I? That's all right. I don't want it to glue it to the cleat below. That would be a little bit of a horrible thing to happen. That's fine. Good. All right. So I'm going to put some nails in, in. This is a little 18 gauge brad nailer. And I use this for really tiny, tiny work. They're half inch brads. They're 18 gauge. These I'm going to use um, inch and a half, which is 38 millimeter. And it should, should be okay. And get a battery from my battery charging station. <laughs> I think that's going to work. Yep, light's coming on. Now, let's put this up here, and I'm going to push it against that. So that's, it's going to look nice, I hope. <laughs> put this down here for the moment. The gun on my hip. Just waiting for tumbleweeds and things to happen, uh, like a western. And put it in line with the top. That's in line there. And I can put a nail in. Yep. And there. Gotcha. See, that, that's an easy way to do it. I've got clearance at the top. I know that I have got clearance for that power point down there. Now I can take it over to the bench again, and we can put some that piece across the bottom, which will stabilize it. So this now should come off, unless I've nailed it to the wall. Look at that. That was lucky, wasn't it? <laughs> All right, up this way. And we'll see the nails haven't come through. You might have noticed when I come over to the other camera, you may have noticed that uh, I shot the nails down at an angle. That stops them coming through. If you, if you think it's going to be very close, yep, call me Sheriff. <laughs> Howdy, partner. Uh, that sounds corny, didn't it? <laughs> All right, so this is going to go onto here, and I might go to Carl Cam for this one. 25.2, and we're doing quite well. Move it around on here. I'm gonna move a couple of these little 
help us out of the way. And that, spin this one around this way. Coffee, have a quick sip. We got 83 people watching. That's lovely. I'll slide her on up to there. Glue. I'm going to glue onto this one because that'll make it easier. There we go. And the brush that I was using, I'm going to. Uh, Give this brush a quick, quick wash. In a minute. This brush, this this is just a little paintbrush, and it makes it easy. In the water. Sorted. So nice and clean, ready for the next one. Okay. Put this on here. And I'm going to put the, uh, the specs on. I should have put the specs on earlier because you only get one set of eyes. One there, and then one down here. A couple in the middle. Cool. Excellent. 86 now. <laughs> All right. That's pretty easy. Next trick is I thought you might want to watch some actual carpentry. Give it another click, David. So let's get that and bring it over here. Down about there, I think. Yeah, about there. We'll switch over to the other camera, camera three. All right, I'm going to cut those. Well, sorry, not cut those. I'm going to plane them. Hopefully, it's going to fit inside there. Let's see. Hmm. Got there. Up a little. About there. And this one up a little. Cool. All right. I'm going to give those a tap with the hammer. That one didn't go in all the way at the beginning. And I'll show you why. I'm going to give it a quick tap with the hammer. Good, good, good because I'm going to use this fellow. You remember this? So what I've done there is I've put the jointer fence on. 
And let's see if it still remembers how to work. I'm taking just a little bit too much off in one pass, but that's not bad. Well, I'll back it up. That's a bit better, and just straighten it up. That might work. Let's see how we go. Right, down a touch. What are we hitting on there? There's a nail. Another rotten nail. That's better. I think we'll catch there. That's better. Beautiful. All right, so that's the bottom. All good. We'll flip her over and do the other side. The top. And we'll put a clamp on there as well, David, because that's starting to go. A couple more nails. That's got him. And a clamp. Why not? I'm going to leave the rest planing it off till it's all, all the glue has dried. That's better. That ain't letting go. So I don't want to rush it, even though we're doing well for time. Put one on there. There's a fair weight in it. That one actually needs it. There's a fair drop in that, so that's okay. I was just a bit slack when I put it on. That out of the way and come back up to this camera. Want to do a quick read? All right, so that's that's being picked up by the cleat. Now we need to do the stuff with the domino. I'm going to create, I'm going to try to create, ah, oh, you got a 150. How nice is it? It's such a nice machine. Um, I'm going to try and create some mortises or holes, whatever you want to call them, for these guys to go into to support. And I need to, I need to th just be a little bit smart about my thinking about how I'm going to do this while it's still got clamps on it and drying. What I can do is rotate those clamps the other way around. I'll take them off one at a time and spin them.
That's working. Didn't think this part through very well, did I? You're probably thinking, where's Dave gone? He's hiding. <laughs> He's back again. Okay. What I've done was just rotated all of those clamps from going that direction because I want to work on the face. So I think now I can spin this around like that and hang it over the back of there. Move the nail gun out of the way. And that's cool. Now I've got to make sure this is the top, this is the bottom. I know that because the top has all of the clamps on it. The bottom doesn't have as many clamps on it. Put a clamp on there, David. Where are they? All right, now if this is the bottom, I'm kind of working around back to front. No, 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 this will be good. Okay, so the domino. Ordinarily, the domino is either like that or like that. Okay. What I'm going to do is set this up at 22 and a half degrees. There's little indents on the side of the machine. So I've set this gate or fence table at 22 and a half. Now when I set it up like that, the domino is going to do a plunge, but I don't want it to move around at all. So what I want to do is come up possibly I'm thinking as I'm going. Yes, <laughs> that's exactly right. Um, I want to make sure that I can get my plungers in along here and still be able to do it behind. I can, I can. All I have to do now, further down the track, is I'll do the second row up, the first row I'll do, by putting another packer here, 36 thick, that high, and then I can bring the domino right over to the edge to get the bottom um, dowels in. Wherever I put them, that's down here. So we're going to end up, hopefully, with dowels here and here, and then there, like a coat rack. So. I don't want to lose where I'm at and have the machine slide around on me. So I'm going to put a piece of wood. That's straight enough. As a guide for the back of the domino. And I'll clamp that on as well. Let me see, how far up do I want to come with this? Um, that hasn't. That's the bottom, and we've done that one straight, haven't we? So that's all plain. That, that, that's where it's going to be. Uh, I can either use the GRS 16 PE and push it up against here, but I have the clamp there at the moment. So I'm going to measure up. Let's see, I need 100 millimeters between each one. I need to come up around about 25 for the first one because I want to go into double thickness down here. And then from, from the bottom of the cutter itself, we've got, I'm going to allow 10 mil. So come up to, I'm going to go 120. Let's see how we go. 120 plus 25 is 145 millimeters. And I think that'll work. It might seem, sound like I'm, talking through my hat at the moment, but it should make sense when I do it. So I'm going to put a stick there and over there. 
and see if this is still going to sit there correctly. It will. It will. Fingers crossed. Um, let's put a couple of clamps on there. All the other clamps are being used up. Get the little click clamps. That one. Beautiful. Right, that's my stop to put the machine against, like so. So when I do the plunge, it's not going to jump because I've got a big cutter in there. That's a 14 millimeter cutter. Watch where the nails are. That's a good idea. There are no nails in this particular one, so there won't be any tears at this stage. All right, we're going to do this. And then I'll show you some more photos. I'm going to show you some photos of what Wendy, who is Peter Lysiak's betrothed, has been making. So this is going to happen pretty quickly. Um, this one on here. And let's come in. Possibly. I'm going to just do the one to start. I'll come in around 150 millimeters. which is close enough to six inches in the old speak, to the center. Eye muffs. This and this up over my shoulder. 150, I'm lining that hole up, or the, that slot there. With that, that's all good. I've got it set to 35 millimeters. Here we go. And let's see what we've got. What do you think of that? I love it. I'm going to do all this later on. I'll, I'll do all the pattern and you can have a look at it next week when we start the show off then. But that's going to work really, really nicely. I'm, I'm happy with that. I'll dock them all to the right length and I'll put in as many as I need. Uh, I'll just give it a bit more thought as I'm going along. I don't want to race this glue. It's, it's going off at a pretty good speed. They say half an hour. I just need to tap that nail down. And I might even put a deep throat clamp in there as well or two, just so the scent is catching properly. And then we'll jump over to these other things. Out there. This one. All right, let's have a look at Wendy's gear. Slide down to here. So Wendy is, as I say, Peter's bit better half. And this is the first cabinet that she's ever made. And how good is this? There you go. She's made all of the drawers, the works. The one on the left-hand side is a filing cabinet. And She's enhanced the filing cabinet with new draw fronts. And all the one on the right hand side is all her work. Look at that. I'll tell you what, Wendy, that is terrific. Absolutely terrific. And I bet you uh, Peter had a massive smile on his face when you finished doing that. All right, where are we? Back to me. So thank you very much for sending that in, Peter. Uh, now, what's the next one? You wanted to see some of the uh, photos that I took. So I've got, um, which one? Which one? Which one? This is one of the images for you to have a look at. So 
that's the different stages. That's the moon and the times underneath. That uh, you can see the one on the left hand side before the eclipse. The next one is the start of the eclipse. The moon nearly in full shadow from the from the Earth, and then the last one is uh, the moon in the eclipse. And then we have a look here. This gives you a bit more of an indication as to what's actually happening. This is as the moon was rising. So these are all taken from my, my backyard and uh, sat in the naughty corner. <laughs> uh, dear, dear, dear. Got up late again, baby, hey? Um, all right, so that's, I was pretty happy with those. They, uh, it was good fun doing it. And it really, you know, puts a smile on my face when I get something done and it actually works the way I wanted it to. All right, if you like those photos, thank you. Good, right, now next week, give me a sec, I'll grab what we're going to do. I've got this big chunk of cedar that I've rescued from going through a chipper around about three years ago. See this? It's a big chunk of tree. This is Australian cedar. So it's a deodar. So the, how you know for a deodar is the cones on the tree are on the underside of the branch, not above it. So radiata pines, the cones are on the up and around. These ones are hanging down. So this, you might have re remembered I got the big Triton uh, seven inch wide uh, power plane to clean this up a little bit. Actually, it wasn't this, it was a piece of bloodwood. That's right. So these ones, I'm going to dock the ends off and then I'm going to rip them. So I've got two different chains. I've got a crosscut chain and I've got a rip chain. We're going to see how it goes, whether there's anything in here that's worthwhile or whether it's going to uh, just be firewood. <laughs> we'll see. But if it ends up being firewood, I've had some other wood here that, that we can use. So some more cedar and some uh, Honduras uh, whatever, maple or whatever it is, uh, mahogany, I should say, and we'll get through with that. Now, this afternoon, you should offer the Eclipse photo for sale. Uh, if anyone wants to buy it, they can buy it. Um, I'll, I'll have a think about that. I do have a, a photography sale site. It's called Smug Mug. So if you go into type in smug mug s m u g m u g and then type my name in or dks photography that's what i used to go under all the time you'll be able to i might load it up there we'll see you can buy prints directly off off that site but that's that's from way back when i was doing sports photography you can have a look at the, the kind of stuff i used to do hi sweetie how are you bink uh now this afternoon we're going to have the chat but it's only going to be for about 10 minutes because my niece is having an engagement party it's down in Sydney. We've got to get down there pretty quickly. I have family up there waiting to go. So what we'll do is we'll wind the show up. Next week, as I said, we're going to play around with that piece of wood, see what we can do. I'll show you the result of this on the wall and also um, try and mill some of that cedar. And then the week after, we'll get stuck into doing all the dovetails and design the whole thing and maybe do a glue up at the same time. Going to utilize what Cole's been telling us how to do. Smug Mug DKS Photography. Thanks, baby. Um, you got to put a link up there, sweetie, if you can find it. And, and, and the week after, or, or a few weeks after that, we're going to do something else really, really nice. I'm going to do a river table. Now, this hasn't been done by me because I thought it was being done to death. Now this is a piece of camphor. This is one of the pieces I have two. And it's gonna be an interesting table and I'm not gonna tell you what its use is gonna be for until right at the end. Because I like to keep you all thinking about things. All right, so for all of my patrons, uh, thank you very much for supporting me through all of this. This is stuff that I hold off during the week and I save it for the show so everyone's got something to watch. Um, and it's the patrons that are actually keeping me here doing this. Okay, so if you want to become a patron, check the links below. 
in the dis video description box. Uh, also, I, have, I will turn off the chat session after the show, so you'll only be able to see the chat session that's coming up down the side here. All right, that's that. There we go. Look after yourselves, be nice to each other, and I shall see you next week. Bye. <music>